What goes up must come down. It seems Isaac Newton's theory of gravity doesn't apply to food prices at restaurants and grocery stores. It's been 30 years since American consumers paid as much as they are now for food. Well, here to explain what's happening and why is Young Voices commentator Jonathan Hartley. Mr. Hartley is a research fellow at the Foundation for Research on Equal Opportunity and Research Associate at the Hoover Institution. Okay, Jonathan, you've done the research. Although President Biden says Bidenomics is working, these statistics tell a different story. Although inflation has cooled a bit over last year, American consumers still paying high prices for groceries and food at restaurants. Why is that? Well, uh, you're absolutely right uh, that food now makes up uh, about 11% of disposable income of Americans. And this is the first time that's been the case since uh, the 1990s. Um, you know, it's, it's really important. Uh, this is actually a really important development because inflation historically has been higher for poor individuals. Uh, and that's really for two reasons. One, a greater share of the poor's income is spent on food and energy. And, and two, the, the poor spend a greater fraction of their income uh, and, and save a lot less than higher income individuals. There's been uh, a lot of uh, discussion about what's caused inflation over the past uh, a few years, uh, you know, which has been the, the greatest uptick in inflation since the 1980s. Uh, you know, some of the biggest um, uh, debates have been around the role of supply chain bottlenecks from the pandemic, uh, excessive uh, fiscal stimulus that um, was passed under both the, the Trump and Biden administrations, uh, and, and then also whether central banks like the Federal Reserve have been uh, slow to raise rates, uh, raise interest rates in response. I think we have a lot to be grateful for in the sense that uh, in the U.S., GDP is, is still rising. Um, you know, compared to other countries, say, in Western Europe or, or in Canada, where GDP per capita has been essentially flat for the past decade. Um, so there, there's really something about uh, American exceptionalism in economic growth. Uh, and that's a trend that I think is, is going to continue with, uh, you know, these uh, the latest developments around AI um, that could potentially lead to a productivity boom that we haven't seen maybe since the age of the computer in the 1990s. Yes, American workers are very hardworking, and I'm sure part of the food problem is the inability to move goods across the country. You'd mentioned that, touched on it. Uh, transportation bottlenecks. The United States still suffers from a shortage of truck drivers. About 80,000 jobs are open. That number is expected to double within the next five to 10 years to 160,000. So how does that factor into high food costs? Well, you're absolutely right that uh, you know supply chain bottlenecks um, uh, matter a lot. Remember, uh, you know, there's all these lockdowns, you know, essentially, you know, a, uh, an imposed uh, shutdown of the economy in many respects. Uh, and then you had all this fiscal stimulus, you know, people had all these uh, stimulus checks um, uh, ready to spend. And then when they decided to reopen the economy in, uh, you know, late uh, 2021, 2022, uh, yeah, there was this you know burst of of spending and and you know a lot of those uh, supply chains uh, don't come back on um, uh, as easily. Um, you know w whether it's you know hiring, uh, getting more truck drivers on the road, um, getting um, you know shipping uh, items uh, moving on time. How about rising wages? I know many states uh, uh, have increased the minimum wage. I'm sure that means the local butcher or grocery store uh, will raise their food prices to consumers to cover the cost increases, right? Or is it just price gouging? Well, I'm, I'm uh, I guess, not a huge fan of the whole price gouging story. I don't think there's a, a whole ton of um, empirical evidence. Uh, I, I do think that you know there there has been um, a role that policies played in, in all of this. Um, you know, we're seeing uh, you know spending. Uh, that was really at an unprecedented level, uh, federal spending um, through uh, you know, everything from uh, the CARES Act early on in the pandemic to uh, the American uh, Recovery Plan, uh, the ARP, to um, the the, uh, the so-called Inflation Reduction Act. And so when you get uh, you know, so much more uh, money in the economy chasing uh, much fewer goods, you, know, you tend to get these sort of inflationary spurts. And, and so I think that's played a big role. I don't necessarily think that um, that minimum wage increases um, you know, they are generally pretty localized. And, and also, you know, we've seen um, you know trade policy that's shifted a bit um, that um, you know makes um, the outsourcing of food from abroad um, somewhat more expensive. Um, I, I think there's a, a number of things that have happened in in recent years that potentially could explain 
uh, why food prices have gone up so much. Okay, we'll see where this all heads, especially in an election year. Young Voices commentator Jonathan Hartley. Thank you, Jonathan, for sharing those insights. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me.